Hi, very warm welcome to Dustin Shelf Collectibles. Today we'll be cutting out and painting a new body for Tammy R. Hornet. Yeah, so anybody who's, uh, I guess, was around in the 80s, maybe even early 90s, this was the staple RC car from Tamiya. Um, you know, many, many, many a child in that day, if we were racing them or belonging to an RC club, would have a Hornet. Uh, this is my one from 1980-odd. A uh, bit of a trigger's broom, really. You know, it's been well raced and uh, well crashed and many parts have been replaced over the years. But uh, it's still going strong. And uh, what I want to do is do it some justice and do a proper video on the Hornet and the various incarnations of the Hornet. But today's video is predominantly about a new body so what i'm looking for is obviously not this body but i'd want to do a different version of the hornet there are several out there um so we're going to go through i'm going to cut this out on the camera go through the problems that you have cutting a polycarbonate body um mask it up and then take it out and spray it um and apply some of the decals so uh yeah let's see how we go right i guess the most important thing to say before i start is if you want tips on how to do this the correct way and the most accurate way there's bound to be better videos on youtube on the internet so don't listen to me this is just me doing it my way and uh maybe good maybe bad don't know so anyway let's open it up see what we've got inside so there should be a rear wing there it is and the main shell now there's a score line running round the shell and that's the point at which we're going to cut um, and I've had success in the past of running a scalpel around these lines to um, to give me a good point of you know to point of, of bend so I can sort of move the material back and forth until it splits quite neatly along along the cut edge so I'm going to carry on with this for a moment and um, I'll come back to you so I just had a look round and um, my eyes aren't good enough so what I'm doing is I'm just trying to mark out where I'm going to put the cuts into the line that I spoke about. It's um, not the easiest thing, well it'd probably be fine with younger eyes but with my eyes it's not the easiest thing to see so just gently marking that so that I can can follow it quite well with a knife. Let's just do this side. I'm trying to find the right point at which to to run down the groove. Yeah, the groove's not so pronounced on this side, so it's quite difficult to get the pen to follow. Mm. Maybe it's not the best route. Okay. It by eye, there's no groove there to follow the pen with. Right, let's try and mark it anyway. The reason I'm out marking the outside of the body is, you know, if you've done one of these before, you'll know that there's a there's a clear, clear film on the outside of the body that you remove once the uh, once it's been sprayed. So I feel quite comfortable in uh, in marking this, um, knowing that. Well, I'm hoping that it will just lift once I've uh, once I've cut once I've sprayed it. Sorry. Right, let's give that a go. Okay, so I'm just going to run the knife around very, very gently. Okay. 
this side's a little bit easier because the the grooves are a little bit more pronounced so the knife is sort of guiding itself rather than being pulled around okay let's do that rear wing So I'm not going to cut through the front at the moment, I'll do that in a second. I'm just going to snip along here so that uh, there's, a, there's a runoff point in that corner. That's it. Okay, and I'm just going to take this back corner up as far as I dare. Okay, so if I now apply a little bit of pressure onto here, you can see that it's beginning to bend along the tear line, there it goes. And now, as I tease that off, which I didn't, I didn't cut through these bits, nearly, nearly broke it. Okay. There we go. And let's see if we can get this to go around the corner. Again, you see how I'm bending, bending the material to work hard on it, to, to get it to break where I, where I've scored. Let's just tease that through there. Okay, a little bit of a hard point. I'll just cut through. I'm not gonna cut my fingers. There you go. Not too bad at all, not too bad at all. Okay, I'll take that up to the front. Yeah, that's not bad, that's not bad. Okay, and then let's go around this rear corner. I'm going to do this cutting it with the knife. That's it. And now again, tease it along um, and just changing direction there. Okay, that's it. And again, along the back, I'm just going to, again, where it's changing direction, I just want to score this just a tiny bit more. Make sure. Right. Tell you what we'll do, we'll come from this corner. Right, come up to that corner, and again, ah, look, it started nice and easy. Sliding it all the way down, I didn't cut through there, so I do need to do that. Okay, gently, gently. There you go. Again, we'll just keep going. perfect. Slide that right the way along to that front corner. I'm just going to take that spare bit of plastic off. Right. Let's get that through there. That's not bad at all. I'm quite pleased with that actually. All right, and then let's do this back corner. over that, that corner just to tease it round and then there's a little bit of a I might just cut this corner with a knife again just to get that to come around the corner you can see I've got a little bit of over over plastic there that I will get rid of right let's just work that through like so Right, onto the front. So, um, I don't know whether it shows up on camera, but there's a little bit of a, um, a piece in here, you can see there, that uh, is for the uh, suspension uprights to sit in. Um, what I've found past experience is not to not to do those bits yet, just cut straight across and get the front right before you do, do those detail. So, again, I'm gonna try and mark the front uh, just so that I can I can see where I'm going. So it's actually down there. Okay, and across here. 
and the front the actual cut line is around the corner just a little bit it's not not directly on the nose of the, the part of the uh of the body sorry so it's just around the edge and this gives it a nice little lip to sit over the over the chassis when it's mounted so i do want to try and get right to the right to the edge and not um not cut it too short if i can help it yeah okay and then as i say on this side i'm just going to cut straight across for now Okay, let's uh, slice this through. Same process, just gently scoring. And here. Now I'm probably gonna have to slide the knife through on these either side of the, the, the uh, um, headlight mount. There's quite a little bit of thickness there. Uh, let's go down here. Try not to apply too much pressure. You don't really need to, it's just scoring it. Um, not trying to cut through, that's for sure. Um, right, let's... Uh, I'm going to come from the front again, I think. Let me just get rid of those bits of plastic because they're getting in the way. Right. Same process as before. Okay, that's perfect. Now I've got to follow that along. And then across the headlight mount. And then again, trying to get in round the front here. But on that, uh, on the cut line, not on the the nose of the body. Got off the line a little bit there. I'll just regather that. Not bad, not bad at all. Okay, thankfully I've slipped off the part that time round. So let's just again bending it very gently and getting it to cut through. It's gone through there nicely. Let's um. Let's do this side. Okay, not bad at all. Again, it's gone nicely through the headlamp mount. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut these through so I'm not bending too much plastic and then do the front. Actually, it's not cutting. Let's give it a go. Let's just do the front. Okay. So again, I'm going around the corner. Cut line, that's good. That's split all the way through. Let's get round the nose of the body. Oh, look at that. It's almost like I did it slowly. Right, I'm just going to take, there's a little point on the end there. Perfect. Okay, so as it goes, not too bad at all. Now for the tricky part, which are these uh suspension mounts so again i'm going to very carefully cut them starting with the curve at the top Oh, a little bit over there, not a problem. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to slice the material through these straight parts, just very, very gently. Let's go up to the there you go, and at this end, same thing. done again I'll try and tease it through like I said this is probably the most difficult part of the body to 
just getting it through this corner and trying to get get a tail line moving you see now it's gone right i'll probably have to i will clean that up a little bit um, when i stop filming you can see i've got a little bit of material in there but i mean they'll, they'll easily be you know scalpeled off i can take those off but i'll, I'll do that in a minute when i've uh, when i've turned the camera off i'm just going to peel that through and take that out there you go one body cut out um not too bad at all actually um I have done much worse, so quite pleased with that. And then um, the uh, the wing, much the same process. You can see where it's marked out. So I shall do that and um, clean these up and come back to you. Right. So this this is actually quite tricky to get round this corner. So let me just. Uh, Slice this through, see how we get on. I find when you get these long runs, try and do them in one go, try not to stop if you can help it. You know, even though once you get to the end it gets a bit wobbly, you'll get a nice flat run. And then round the corner, let's run down here, and then off to one side. Again, being careful with your fingers because, well, I don't know what knife you may be using, but this scalpel is as sharp as sharp things get. And I guess, uh, you know, I like say to my own kids, don't do this. One, don't do this on your own. Go and get an adult helper. Don't, uh, you know. And, uh, I assume, you know, nobody watching this is going to let their kids loose with a scalpel anyway. So. Perfect, there you go, uh, one hornet cut out, come back and I'll do the uh, window decals in a minute, the masking, sorry. Off camera I've gone ahead and uh, thoroughly washed the inside of the uh, the body with uh, soapy water. Um, you do this to release, get rid of all the release agents from the moulding before you spray it. So next job, putting the window masks, now these are aftermarket window masks buy them from all over the place or you can just tape it up with tape um, whatever's best I, I prefer to buy them because they fit quite well but um, yeah let's go ahead and stick these in I can do the real one first So 
So obviously you put these in before painting. You spray gently over the top and then once the paint's set you peel these off and it'll obviously leave a clear clear window. I'm just trying to get this positioned to where I want it before I push it down flat. So that's pretty good. And that'll be this far side. Now this one's a little bit tricky. So this is a throwback from as I say, the 80s, where you, in, with the 27 megahertz aerials uh, or radio control gear, you'd need an aerial poking out of the car. Obviously, with the modern uh, 40 megahertz um, digital radios, they don't even need an aerial, most of them. But uh, this is still in the molding, um, so a little bit tricky to get around that, but um, we'll focus on that in a moment. Okay, so uh, I did this off camera because it was uh, quite fiddly and I needed to bring it a bit closer to my face so I could see what I was doing. But I've applied the masks on the inside here. Not too worried about those air bubbles. I want, still want to trim this back one up a little bit. I'm not really happy with that one. Um, and then, as I say, this is the aerial um, moulding in the side of the body, which always becomes a little bit tricky. So um, with the trusty tape, I'm just going to mask, hand mask over that area. Uh, to make sure that all the lines match up Right, I've uh, You can see I've masked over the aerial area here. I've sorted out the rear window Master on the inside ready to go um, As you probably already know you spray lectum or polycarbonate bodies on the inside So when you look on the outside because they're clear, you know, you get a nice positive shiny color um, It's quite nice nice thing when you finally turn them over and reveal them but um, I'm going to take it outside and dust over the, uh, the body now. Okay so when spraying what we're going to do is we're going to build up very very thin layers, very thin layers of paint and the reason you do this is if you get it too thick it will creep behind the mask and the windows so however tempting it is to spray it all in one go try and resist it and uh, just build thin layers let them dry and come back and do the next one. A little, little bit of... This is uh, obviously the box I keep outside that I do all my spraying in at the moment. That's morning spent uh, adding coats onto the body and uh, it's looking pretty good. Um, windows, I've unmasked them, looking good. Um, I've got some decals. These are aftermarket decals that I'm going to add to the model. But before we do that, then probably the most rewarding part of spraying any polycarbonate or Lexan shell is to peel the outer, outer plastic off. So you see on the windows here, I've got various bits of overspray. Once you peel this outer cover off, if I can get it started, you're left with a perfect exterior finish. Uh, just try and get my nail under the corner there. You can see it's starting to peel away. Once you get it going, it, it does come off quite easily. Yeah, look at that. Look at the difference. Almost a perfect finish. Let me just peel that back across. Look at that. Perfect. Yeah. Reminds me of the Griswolds. <laughs> You've seen there. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. <laughs> right. There you go. Looking superb. I'm really, really pleased with the finish on that. You know, the windows are pretty, pretty good. Yeah, really pleased with that. So, onto the decals. I'll take the plastic off the rear wing in a moment, a little bit later. So, um, when, it, when you come to put the decals onto a body, it always takes a bit of planning in which order to put them on and which way to get the stickers overlapping to each other. So I think with this one, I'm gonna go with the two pillars to start with, top of the cow, front of the cow, then probably the sides. Actually, I'll do the, do the rear wing before I do the sides then the bonnet last. So.
So if you want to position the sticker, rather than using your fingers, put it onto the knife and then line it up to where you want it. Okay, something. Let's do this. Let's, I'm going to do it one side at a time, actually. Do the rear wing. Can't help but feel that maybe that's not the right one to do. Let's do this one next. You have to move the stickers out of camera shot because the uh, lights are reflecting off of them and I can't can't see to cut them. Let's go for the long side.
yeah, somewhere there. What a challenging thing to do. The stickers themselves, they're very, very thick. They're printed onto thick plastic. So they don't stretch, they don't give. Every time I touched them, they scratched a little bit. So although they're good stickers and this particular design, I couldn't find anywhere else, this is what I wanted. Um, those of you will be aware, this is a, a, there was a Hornet produced for a sponsorship for a company. And this was the livery that was used for that sponsorship. So it's a quite a particular Hornet that I wanted to build. Um, but with them not being having any give, I didn't want to put any heat on them. The recommendation when you're putting these stickers onto polycarbonate bodies is to to use heat from a hairdryer or something, and then you can stretch the stickers. I didn't want to do this with these; these were so fragile. Um, the joints in places I've got them spot on. In other places, you can see the edge of the sticker, which um, there is where the printing didn't run to the edge of the sticker. Other places I've got small gaps to compensate. Um, my son would refer to this as a 10 footer, as in you look at it from 10 feet away, it looks perfect. When you get up and look at the detail, it's not perfect. I've got some sponsorship stickers that I will put over various areas and like here on the nose where the stickers don't meet, I should just put a small sticker on there. It'll just take your eye away from it. It'll, it will look fine. It will look fine. I did lose the rear wing sticker. Um, I put this on, ended up with a crease in it. 
tried to get the crease out. The crease then created a, a split in the sticker. I then lost some of the paint on the sticker. It turned into a disaster. And actually, although I've kept a little bit of it here, I'll probably remove that. It looked better without, it, you know, rather than having some shoddy looking, well, crumpled mess on the corner. It's better just to leave it as black. What I'll do is um, I will get back to the company here and I'll order another sticker. Um, see if they'll do me just the rear quarter um, and get that uh, when that comes in I'll, um, I'll I'll add that to it so it won't be too bad so all in all if you want to know how to do these things properly as I always say there's a hundred YouTube videos of people that will uh, explain exactly the right way to do things I'm just a hobbyist I just enjoy what I do I get it wrong and when I get it wrong I tell you I get it wrong so you know it, it's, it's I guess as I keep saying, this is how the rest of us do it. So um, enjoy enjoy modelling. Don't you know? Don't get too hit up over the fact that it's uh, that it goes wrong or it doesn't look perfect. Uh, um, that's that's my motto. Anyway, um, thanks ever so much for watching, and uh, join me again on the next one.